Hello everyone. Today we will be learning a very important thing in algebra. That is how to use roots of unity. Roots of unity to solve problems related to polynomials. This is a theme that comes up in Math Olympiad repeatedly. It is also used in the ISI and CMI entrances. So we discuss this idea in both of these programs at Chinta. You can check the link in the description to learn more about this. Okay. All right. So what is roots of unity and how can we use to solve problems in polynomials? As usual, we will learn this concept using a problem. So I'll tell you the problem first that will act as a motivation. So here is the problem. Suppose we have this polynomial x raised to 20, x raised to 15, x raised to 10, x raised to 5 and 1. Okay. So this is a polynomial that is given to us and we want to divide this polynomial using another polynomial which is like this x raised to 4 x raised to 3 x square x and 1 okay so we are dividing this 20 degree polynomial by this fourth degree polynomial and we are interested in the remainder of this division process so Notice that the, if you divide by a fourth degree polynomial, the remainder has to be a third degree polynomial or less than third degree polynomial, right? Because if it's a fourth degree polynomial, you can again divide it by this one. So the first thing that we learn today is that the remainder must be a degree 3 or less polynomial. Okay. Great. So we can write a degree 3 polynomial like this um, let me use a different color ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d of course if it's a degree 2 polynomial then a will be 0 in this case so this is a general structure with that we will use but a could be 0 then it is a second degree polynomial a and b both could be 0 then it, it's a linear polynomial and a, B, C, all three of them are zero, and then it's just a number. That's all these things are possible. But in general, we can write that this is a AX cube, BX square, uh, CX plus D. This is the form. Okay. So this is the remainder, suppose. It's a general structure of the remainder. When you divide this 20 degree polynomial by this fourth degree polynomial, and here is the question. The question is. Take the apps. What is the absolute value of a plus b plus c plus d? So this is a problem that one of our students asked us in the one-on-one -on -one program, uh, the on-demand one-on-one -on -one program, and we really loved this problem because it teaches us a lot. Um, so how do you solve it? Okay. So to do that, you have to understand uh, about uh, roots of unity because that will help us to easily solve it. You really don't want to divide it all along, right? That's a very tedious process. So let me pick this uh, text and put it to the left. And let's talk a little bit about roots of unity. Of course, we cannot learn 
everything about roots of unity uh, in this particular video that is reserved for our complex number module of uh, math olympiad program and uh, isi and cmi entrance program but we can say something so what is the meaning of roots of unity well it's very simple it's like this if you take x square minus 1 equal to 0 that's the easiest example the easiest example is actually x minus 1 equal to 0 so what is the value of x of this one in this one degree polynomial what is the value of x such that this equation is satisfied so this equation has one root of unity because this is x equals to 1 so this equation is x equals to 1 and the only solution to this equation is the value x equals to 1 itself so there is only one root of unity in this particular case unity is 1 right in this particular case x square minus 1 we can do better so this is x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to 0 so this is x equals to negative 1 or x equals to positive 1 so there are these two different roots of 1 so you can actually write this as x square equals to 1 so what number when squared gives you 1 that's the question and there are it's a quadratic so it will have two roots and we know the two roots are plus 1 and minus 1 so it's a second root of unity you can say plus 1 and minus 1 are the second roots of unity what about the cubic roots of unity so of course you have to use the uh, equation x cube equals to 1 x cube equals to 1 and the answer is that there are three numbers 1 oops there are three numbers 1 omega and omega square 1 omega and omega square there are three numbers which are the three roots of this cubic equation you know by the fundamental theorem of algebra there will be three real or complex roots of a cubic equation so we name them as 1 omega and omega square and we can easily solve for them i'll show you how to solve how to find out the value of omega and omega square and why they are structured like this it's quite simple actually so i'll show i'll show you the derivation derivation it's so you factorize it you take the one to the left hand side x cube minus one you factorize it equal to zero so either x minus 1 is 0 which means x is equal to 1 or we have this other part which is I, be, I believe a little bit more interesting x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0 which is which is uh, you can take the value of x using the quadratic formula so minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2 times a so this is negative 1 plus or minus negative 3 square root of negative 3 by 2 okay so why am i using the words omega and omega square what is the reason okay here is the reason so let's call one of them omega minus 1 minus square root of negative 3 by 2 suppose this one is omega then if you do omega square let's see what we get omega square will be minus half whole square plus square root of negative 3 by 2 whole square uh, so this is negative 2 times minus half minus 3 by 2 here we go so i'm just okay I, I just split this into negative half negative square root of negative 3 by 2 and then I just squared it okay so what do I get 
well i get 1 by 4 1 by 4 plus this is negative 3 by 4 and then you have two negative signs let's cancel them off and this 2 2 plus okay let's keep this 2 negative square root of negative 3 by 4 okay so now you can uh, take the LCM of this so 4 is the LCM negative 2 plus 2 square root of negative 3 by 4 take the 2 common and cancel it off and you will get negative 1 plus plus negative square root of 3 by 2 which is exactly the other root of this equation one of them was negative 1 negative square root of uh, negative 3 by 2 the other one was negative 1 plus square root of negative 3 by 2 which we found is the square of the other one right so that's how the that's why we call this omega and omega square there is another way there are a couple of other ways to see this uh, so the other way is if if you take x cube minus 1 equal to 0 if you take that then this is x minus 1 x square plus x plus 1 is 0 now certainly either x minus 1 is 0 or this part is 0 so let's look at the other part x square plus x plus 1 is 0 now we know that x equals to minus 1 minus square root of negative 3 by 2 is one of the roots let's call it omega i just manually showed that omega square omega square is negative 1 plus square root of negative 3 by 2 i just manually showed it but i can do it just using this particular uh, equation why well if i put if i just look at omega square and plug it in here what do i get first if i plug in omega square i get omega square plus omega plus 1 is 0 so let's we will use this relation this is true why because omega is one of the roots of this equation so if you plug in omega it should work the other the other thing is that omega cube is 1 because of course it's a cube root of unity you factorized x cube minus 1 so plugging in omega in place of x in the equation x cube minus 1 would satisfy it so omega cube is 1 now let's plug in omega square in this and check what happens so omega square whole square plus omega square plus 1 let's see what it is so this is omega q omega raised to 4 plus omega square plus 1 but omega raised to 4 is omega cube omega plus omega square plus 1 but omega cube is 1 so this is omega plus omega square plus 1 but we know that omega plus omega square plus 1 is 0 hence the equation this is equal to 0 so plugging in omega square also works which is great so a lot of words about cube roots of unity here there is yet another way to visualize it it is using geometry so this video is getting a bit too long so i'll just briefly say it that one way to think about it is that you take omega uh, one here omega here and omega square here remember omega is minus 1 by 2 minus root 3 by 2 i right so actually in this picture this is omega square and omega would be negative half plus square root of 3 by 2 i because I just split I just wrote negative root 3 by negative root 3 i now if you know a little bit of complex numbers you know exactly what's going on here this is negative half 
toward the left hand side of the x axis and you have to go up root 3 by 2. So the coordinate of this point is negative half comma root 3 by 2 and the coordinate of this particular point is negative half comma negative root 3 by 2. So if you understand why complex numbers are rotations then you know that okay cube roots of unity will be points on this circle unit circle with this length as 1 with this length as 1 and these angles being split up into three parts the 360 degree angle being split up into three parts so this is 120 degree this is 240 degree and that's and the final angle is 360 degree so yet another way of thinking about cubic roots of unity as points in the plane which make this kind of angle and that one unit one unit distance away from the origin so they are points on the unit circle equally spaced around of course we are not able to discuss this in full length because this is not a tutorial on uh, complex numbers and cubic roots of unity it's a sort of a problem solving thing for that but that's this is the main idea okay that you have you can see it in three ways you can either apply the sridharacharya formula and find manually the three roots or you use that relation that we just used omega square plus omega plus one is equal to one or you see this using this visual technique using geometry so what we will be using and that we will do in the next part of the uh, um, video is that we will use fifth roots of unity fifth roots of unity so why is that well we observe that x raised to 5 minus 1 equal to 0 the fifth roots of unity let's call that theta then the five roots of unity would be 1 comma theta comma theta square comma theta cube comma theta to the power 4 what is whatever is the value of theta these are the five roots of unity so what we can do is we can just take uh, factorization of this and this will give us this will give us this particular factorization how does it help us well x minus 1 is of course uh, gives us x equals to 1 that's one of the fifth roots of unity if theta is any other fifth root of unity suppose there will be another one there will be five of them because by fundamental theorem of algebra there will be five real or complex roots if so if let me write that if theta is another root of unity another fifth root of unity you can show that theta square is also a fifth root of unity why because of course it satisfies this part of this factorization so there are two relations again theta to the power 4 theta cube theta square plus theta plus 1 is 0 that's the first relation and theta to the power 5 is equals to 1 because it's a fifth root of unity so you have these two relations at your disposal now plug in theta square into this equation so if you if i plug in theta square what do i get well i'll briefly do it theta to the power 8 plus theta to the power 6 plus theta to the power 4 plus theta square plus 1 now theta to the power 6 is just theta why because it is theta to the power 5 into theta and theta to the power 5 is 1 so this is theta and this is theta cube again you can take out a theta to the power 5 so you have theta to the power 3 theta theta to the power 4 theta square 1 okay so then the first equation kicks in and tells us that that is 0 which tells me that theta square is also a root of this particular expression awesome isn't it now you can also plug in theta cube 
and check and theory power 4 and check and all of them will work. So now that we understand that this is the this is the way we should be approaching uh, cubic or fifth roots of unity in this case we really don't have to compute fifth roots of unity that's the main thing you have to remember do not compute fifth roots of unity use their properties use their properties so what are their properties uh, there are two properties that we will be using theta to the power 5 is equal to 1 and theta to the power 4 theta cube theta square theta plus 1 is equal to 0 okay great so now we are ready to work with that particular problem so what is that problem uh, it was x to the power 20 plus x to the power 15 plus x to the power 10 x to the power 5 1 this is equal to x to the power 4 x cube plus x square plus x plus 1 times some quotient plus the remainder okay so obviously if you divide by this quantity you will get some quotient which we call qx and then the remainder is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d right now let's plug in theta on both sides theta being the theta being a cubic uh, fifth root of unity root of unity so if we plug in theta on both side if we plug in theta on both side what do we get you notice that theta to the power 20 or theta to the power 15 or theta to the power 10 each of them will be 1 because there will be a 3 to the power 5 raised to the power 4. That's 3 to the power 20. It's a multiple of 5. The exponent is a multiple of 5. So this left hand side will be 5. If I plug in theta to the power 20 to the uh, theta on the left hand side, it will be 5. Of course, this part will be 0 because if I plug in theta here, this first relation will kick in and that would make this part 0. So I'll have 5 is equals to a theta cube b theta square c theta d. Correct? Now, of course, I can not only plug in theta to the power, uh, just theta, but I can also plug in theta square. I can plug in theta cube and I can plug in theta to the power 4. Okay, so why don't you do that? Why don't you plug in theta square, theta cube and theta to the power 4 to the left hand side and check what you get. So for example, if I plug in theta square to the left hand side, again, I'll get 5 on the left hand side because again, the exponent will be a multiple of 5 for each of these cases. And the right hand side, I'll get a theta to the power theta square whole cube which is theta raised to 6 which is just theta because theta to the power 5 is 1 so a theta plus b theta raised to 4 uh, sorry yeah theta raised to 4 plus c theta square plus d theta plus d just d okay <clears throat> all right that's great and then we will have, we can plug in theta cube here and theta raised to 4 here. So why don't you do that for each of the cases? For each of the cases, plug in theta, theta raised to 2, theta raised to 3, and theta raised to 4, and create four equations. And then you should be able to get the final answer, which is the value of a plus b plus c plus d. I think you can do it and can you put the final answer of the absolute value of a plus b plus c plus d in the comment so that I can give a response to it okay and if you are doing this in our portal then you can also check the answer uh, in the genius app so that's great as well okay uh, so I'll see you in the next one uh, till then
keep on doing great mathematics and uh, stay safe bye